What's good, family? I've been keeping late hours lately. Um, I had a little extra time, so I wanted to do this. <clears throat> the Lord was speaking to me earlier about a message I'm going to share. But before we do that, let's uh, do what we do and invite the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your blessings in my life. I thank you for always being a stronghold and a shelter in my time of challenge, Father. You are truly merciful. You are kind. You are powerful. You are authentic. You are just so real and you are just great and mighty, God. You're strong, Father, and you are my confidence. Father, I am grateful for you in my life. When I see storms come in my life, when I see challenges, obstacles, oppositions, circumstances that would invoke fear, I find myself having peace because I trust in you. And even in moments when I momentarily will just be distracted by what I'm seeing, at some time in the process, I'm reminded that you are with me. You are my anchor, you are my shield, you are my strong tower, and you elevate me above my enemies, God. Father, I thank you for your mercy and your favor in my life and your grace. I thank you that when I fall short, when my strength wants to uh, fail me, you sustain me with your strength. The book of 2 Corinthians says, in weakness, your strength is made perfect. And in the book of Nehemiah, it says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So, Father, I want to give you praise, glory, and honor before the people just saying you are truly God and God alone. Yahweh, Father, you are God and God alone. Jesus, Lord, Savior, first fruit before the rest of us were adopted. The, the only begotten son, big brother, you are worthy and worthy of all the praise. Holy Spirit, the one who seals me for the day of redemption, the one who gives me these words to preach, the one who speaks to my heart and guides me and protects me and ministers to my soul. You are worthy of all the praise. Ruach HaKadosh. So I say, Father, I thank you. I thank you for your protection, your guidance. Um, and I revere you, Father. I thank you in the name of Jesus the Christ. I pray this message touches the hearts of everybody who hears it. Amen. All right, y'all. <clears throat> my dad had written a song years ago. And I was singing it tonight when I was at his house, him and my mom's house. And um, it's a beautiful song. I said to him jokingly, I said, I'm going to take it from you. We got the same name, but he had already copyrighted it and everything. <clears throat> but it goes, um, you alone are worthy, Lord, worthy of the uh, honor. You alone are worthy, Lord. Worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. You alone are worthy, Lord. Worthy of the honor. You alone are worthy, Lord. Worthy of our praise. <clears throat> it's late, so I can't get loud. I worship you, and I adore you. I give thanks to you because of who you are. I worship you, and I adore you. All of this I do. Because of who you are. You can repeat it with me. You alone are worthy, Lord. Worthy of the honor. You alone are worthy, Lord. Worthy of our praise you alone are worthy lord worthy of the honor you alone are worthy lord worthy of my our praise we worship you <clears throat> and we adore you. We give thanks to you 
because of who you are. Lord, we worship you and we adore you. All of this we do because of who you are. Let's sing it one more time. <clears throat> you alone are worthy, Lord. Worthy of the honor. You alone are worthy, Lord. Worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Okay, one more. You alone are worthy, Lord. Worthy of the honor. You alone are worthy, Lord. Worthy of my praise. I could just keep singing, but I'll get louder. Um, so the message tonight, um, I, it may be a bit brief. I, it might be a little long. We'll see. <clears throat> but um, it comes from Ecclesiastes 3, chapter 11, chapter 3, verse 11, excuse me. And it says, um, in fact, I'll start in verse 10. I have seen the burden God has placed on us all, yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart, but even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work. I think it says from beginning to end. And so I really wanted to hone in on that part where it says everything is made beautiful in its own time. You know, in life, everything has a process. Even situations in life that are challenging and difficult to understand and go through and to undergo. If you trust God, he will turn a negative into something beautiful in your life. Um, I think about plants. Oftentimes, plants and things that are growing from the ground, um, the ground was fertilized by manure or, you know, which is, <laughs> you know, that's excrement. It's waste. And um, sometimes God can take a situation that's like nasty, disgusting, like excrement, and it can be the fuel that fertilizes your circumstance and elevates you. And um, I just want you to know that God hasn't forgotten you. Even though you're facing a trial that's very difficult to go through, don't give up. He has a beautiful expectation on the other side. And when you trust him, he'll take something very ugly and make it very beautiful. There was a story. This just came to me as I'm saying this. I heard um, a pastor, Jamal Bryant, in Atlanta told this story. He said there was a story of a woman. I believe she was a black woman next to her neighbor who was white. And the, the white neighbor was racist towards a black woman. I don't know if it's a true story or not, but it was an analogy. He spoke. And he said the uh, the white neighbor, she would throw um, manure or excrement over the fence of the black woman as a way to try to, I guess, intimidate her and get her to move. Um, this went on for a while. And uh, one day the um, the white neighbor got sick. And the black woman came to visit her and brought her beautiful flowers. The white neighbor was taken aback at the kindness that she had shown. And she felt so bad that she told her that I have, I've been the one throwing waste over your fence. And the black neighbor, black woman said, I know. She said, these flowers came from that waste. And it just goes to show you that something that starts out so disgusting and so ugly can birth something so beautiful. So don't give up just because you're going through a hard time. God is with you. And... <clears throat> I wanted to re reference a few more scriptures. I'm going to go to Romans 8, 28. In fact, before I even do that, I think I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to the book of Job. This is a story about the book of Job, and I won't be before you long. But Job was a man who was a righteous man. And one day his life was turned upside down, and he did not know why. And what ended up happening was in heaven... The devil and God had basically a wager on Job and the decisions he would make. You know, God made it clear to the devil that Job was a righteous man. He made it clear to Satan that Satan was walking to and fro the earth and he had come to the heavenly courts one day. And Satan challenged God and said, well, if he's really so righteous, he's only righteous because you do all these great things for him. And he asked for God's permission to begin to attack Job's life. And so little by little, God permitted him to do so, but he said, don't kill him. And he was like, well, no, he's going to curse you to your face and, and then he'll die. 
and Job wouldn't do it. But Job was still pleading his case, saying, this isn't right. I don't know what I'm going through. He was trying to tell his friends. His friends were questioning him. Um, however, there's a young man with wisdom who spoke something to Job, and it applies. And so I'm going to read it. It's in Job chapter 36. <clears throat> his name was Elihu. Elihu continued speaking. Let me go on and I will show you the truth. For I have not finished defending God. I will present profound arguments for the righteousness of my creator. I am telling you nothing but the truth, for I am a man of great knowledge. God is mighty, but he does not despise anyone. He is mighty in both power and understanding. He does not let the wicked live, but gives justice to the afflicted. He never takes his eyes off the innocent, but he sets them on thrones with kings and exalts them forever. If they are bound in chains and caught up in a web of trouble, he shows them the reason. He shows them their sense of pride. He gets their attention and commands that they turn from evil. If they listen and obey God, they will be blessed with prosperity throughout their lives. All their years will be pleasant, but if they refuse to listen to him, they will cross over the river of death, dying from lack of understanding. For the godless are full of resentment. Even when he punishes them, they refuse to cry out to him for help. They die when they are young after wasting their lives in a moral living. But by means of their suffering, he rescues those who suffer, for he gets their attention through adversity. For God is leading you away from danger, Job, to a place free from distress. He is setting your table with the best food, but you are obsessed with whether the godless will be judged. Don't worry, judgment and justice will be upheld. But watch out, or you may be seduced by wealth. Don't let yourself be bribed into sin. Could all your wealth or all your mighty efforts keep you from distress? Do not long for the cover of night, for what is for that is when people will be destroyed. Be on guard, turn back from evil, for God sent this suffering to keep you from a life of evil. Look, God is all powerful, who is a teacher like him? No one can tell him what to do or say to him you have done wrong. Instead, glorify his mighty works, singing songs of praise. Everyone has seen these things, though only from a distance. Look, God is greater than we can understand. His years cannot be counted. He draws up the water vapor and then distills it into rain. The rain pours down from the clouds and everyone benefits. Who can understand the spreading of the clouds and the thunder that rolls forth from heaven? See how he spreads the lightning around him and how it lights up the depths of the sea? By these mighty acts, he nourishes the people, giving them food in abundance. Now, let me just... I went a little further, but let me just say this. One, one thing I wanted to say, he said, be on guard, turn back from evil, for God sent this suffering to keep you from a life of evil. I think it's amazing how God, he also said, but by their means of suffering, he rescues those who suffer, for he gets their attention through adversity. And this is something that basically is saying God will use adversity to get our attention onto him. And so you may be having some unfair circumstances, some unfair challenges, but keep in mind, God is still in control and the enemy had to go get permission to attack your life. And you may be going through some challenges, but the challenges are often an opportunity for you to look in God's direction for assistance, for help, and to draw closer to God. And sometimes, and see what God knows is if we don't have challenges in our life, we may take them for granted and never look in his direction. And so he allows circumstances to get tough as a means to draw us to him, but he's still a good God. I remember there was a movie called, um, and this is going to cut off in one minute for the Instagram people. Let me say this. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. If you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you will inherit eternal life and not eternal death. Because if you don't know Jesus, you're not going to get into heaven. You're going to go to hell. You can know about Jesus. You can study about him. But if you don't know him intimately, you don't have access to heaven and God doesn't want you to have that experience, but he gives you free will. There's challenges in the Christian walk as we're reading. There's adversities, but there's blessings and it's worth it. So join me if you want to know Jesus. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. I believe God the Father raised you back from the dead. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. If you did that, your name is in the book of life. Get in a Bible-based church and watch God transform your life. Get baptized in water and spirit. You can see the rest of this video on YouTube. My name is Daryl Alder II. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. All right, back to the message. So um, 
there was a movie that came out years ago called God's Not Dead. And it was a really good movie. They had four of them. But in the very first one, there was a woman. She was dealing with Alzheimer's. And she had two kids, two adults. Her daughter, who returned her life back to the Lord. And her son, who um, who was not living for God. And there's a scene. Her son was played by the actor Dean Cain. There's a scene where he's looking at his mother. And she's not in her right mind. He's just sitting there. And he looks at her and he says to her, he said, you lived a perfect life. He said, you are the most kindest person I know. He said, I am not. I'm the most evil person I know. He said something like that. He said, how is it that you serving God have a life like this where you can't even remember you're who you are, but I don't serve God and my life is perfect. He said, say that, explain that to me. And God gave her understanding. And she said to him, sometimes the devil will give people everything they want so that they're so distracted that they don't pay attention to God. She said, it's like they're in a prison cell and then they can always get out, but they don't. And then one day they look up and the door is shut. And then she turned and looked at him and said, who are you? <clears throat> and her saying that was just an indication to him that you're distracted by the pleasures of life and you don't even realize you're being fattened for the kill. And so sometimes the adversities we face in life, the challenges we face in life, the circumstances that are negative are God's way of getting our attention to activate our faith to trust him, to walk in the, the authority, the authenticity of what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And so when you're going through challenging times, count it all joy when you find yourself in diverse trials because God is using that to build your faith. And he says, let patience work her perfect work, developing that patience in you because he's got something in store for you. Oh, excuse me. I wanted to also re reference another scripture, Romans 8, 28. It says, all things work together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. So these promises I'm speaking to you, they apply if you are in relationship with Jesus, if you are in his family, and you may be going through a tough time. It may feel like life has dropped a lot of manure on you, but understand God will take the nasty, yucky stuff and he will blossom something beautiful. As I mentioned earlier, everything is made beautiful in its own time and all things work together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. So I pray you, you take this word to heart today. I'm going to give you some scriptures you can reference so that you can spend time with God for yourself. It's good that you hear the word I'm preaching, but the truth is you also need to spend time with God for yourself so that he can minister to you and show you things that you need to see. Genesis 37, Romans 8, 28, Ecclesiastes 3, 11, Job 36. There's another scripture in the book of Psalms. It says, weeping, May endure for the night, but you wake up in the morning. I'll have to tag that too. Anyway, I just wanted to say this as encouragement because sometimes when we have isolated experiences that are tough, we can't see the grand scheme of things. And so we just want to give up because we're basing everything on that one moment. But if you serve God, then you must know he's going to work it out for your good. He's faithful and true. And he will see to it that that situation you're facing will somehow benefit your life. Anyway. My name is Daryl the Second. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. It would be very helpful if you, and much appreciated, if you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Get this algorithm going and give people the opportunity to hear the message of Jesus Christ. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to be done, and I'm going to go to bed because it's late. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this chance to share your heart and to share your word and to speak your truth. And Father, I thank you for the ears that got to hear it and the eyes that got to see and I thank you for the lives that will be transformed because it's your message, your power, and your presence that's bringing this truth. I am a yielded servant, a yielded vessel, but ultimately the power it comes from inside because it's you that's inside of me. I'm an earthen vessel with a treasure on the inside, and you are the treasure, Holy Spirit. So I just thank you for allowing me the pleasure to take part in this, but using me mightily as an instrument and giving me these gifts to preach your good news with power, fire, and authenticity, and with joy. So I pray that there are people who would hear this and be inspired and would come to know you for themselves. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If you got any comments, any questions, holla at your boy. Um, I already did the prayer earlier. If you want to know Jesus, you must confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he's Lord. That he died and he came back from the grave. And if you do believe that, your name will be written in the book of life. And you will go to heaven, not hell. And you will have a relationship with Jesus. But if you don't, unfortunately... You'll be separate from God forever in anguish, hell, and torment, and misery. And he doesn't want that, but he gives you free choice. He came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. 
I pray this blesses you. Any questions, I'll let you boy. Peace.